As the leader of the judicial branch, I am here to address the current challenges facing our local courts all across the state. Our state courts play a vital role in protecting the public health and safety. We settle disputes civilly and promote healthy, secure communities by administering fair and impartial justice accessible to all. Unfortunately, in the moment we are facing, we must weigh the benefits of our court services against the need to protect North Carolinians from exposure to coronavirus. Thousands of people enter our courthouses every day, most often because they have been summoned to be there and will risk legal consequences if they do not appear. And while the work of our courts must continue, my first priority is the health and safety of the public that we serve and of the employees we provide those services in our courthouses. Unprecedented challenges call for thoughtful, bold, innovative responses. We must be proactive in taking steps to prioritize the health and safety of our fellow North Carolinians while also maintaining the integrity of our judicial system. Effective Monday, March 16th, I'm ordering that most district and superior court cases be continued for at least 30 days with some limited exceptions that Director Wooten will go over in a moment. This will allow us to drastically reduce the exposure caused by crowded sessions of court, which often bring hundreds of people at a time into our courthouses. And by doing so, we will be doing our part to help slow the spread of the coronavirus. We also want people who are sick or believe that they have been exposed to the coronavirus to avoid coming to court. And I encourage judicial officials to be liberal in using their discretion to grant relief to people who are unable to come to court. We do recognize the need, however, for some limited exceptions to help lessen the impact of our business community and our North Carolina's families. Specifically, preliminary criminal proceedings such as bond and probate, um, probable cause hearings, excuse me, will continue to be held. All victims of domestic violence will continue to have access to the courts and protective orders will continue to be processed. Magistrates will continue to issue warrants and will perform marriages. Proceedings that go before the clerk, such as estates administrations, guardianships, commitments, and other special proceedings will in fact continue. Finally, and it is important to the extent that certain hearings, hearings can be held remotely by telephone or video conference, the Chief Justice's order leaves room for judges to exercise their discretion in setting and conducting such hearings remotely. We know many of you will have questions as we work together to implement these policies. Fortunately, the judicial branch will be providing continuous um, up to the minute information and answers to frequently asked questions on our website at nccourts.org.